Redeemer. Amen. Amen. It was mid-summer, mid-July, mid-week, and it was mid-chaos. It was a few summers ago when I was leading and learning alongside about 65 middle school aged campers at Pilgrim Lodge, the camp I have worked at for many years and where I'm currently spending my weekdays. During this particular summer, a few years ago, it seemed as though nothing could go right. Nothing was going according to plan and plans were falling out of place. I found myself running craft activities that resulted in mushy, messy tie-dye, teaching teens to make friendship bracelets that ended up in tangled, stringy disasters, leading all camp field games that ended in campers with bloody noses. It was just one of those days, or weeks, or summers, when it seemed nothing would go right. And just when it seemed nothing else could possibly go wrong, I, down at our waterfront, tripped and fell and stumbled to my knees, and I had broken my ankle. Injured so deeply, I was directed to stay on crutches for five weeks in the middle of the woods of Maine. There was no end in sight to this utter and complete chaos. It is a true, true story. And so I began to lose hope. I began to feel as though I must have lost my touch lost my ability to create that summer camp magic I knew so well, or so I thought I did. I had lost my ability to cultivate a community that would empower and encourage the youth of today to build a better tomorrow. Felt I had lost the thing I was best at. And it was truly beyond tangled bracelets and melted ice cream and broken ankles beyond plans that failed and fell apart. I began to feel I could not find my way. I could not find my light. It just kept stumbling and falling and failing. You have surely before heard me talk about how much I love running summer camp, and you have heard me talk about the joys and the celebrations of doing this thing I love, and yet in this moment, in this summer, I felt as though I had broken, snapped, felt as though my light had gone out. Surely you have felt this way before. Hope was nowhere to be found. Even in my favorite place doing my favorite thing, my humanness had gotten the worst of me. But I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be my best. I am a bit of a perfectionist sometimes. And yet, our best is sometimes a seemingly impossible thing to be. This summer, we, the Falmouth Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, are doing our best to show up as our whole, real, authentic selves, right? Come as you are. Invite others to do the same, but perhaps you've found yourself week after week sitting in these pews thinking, Lydia, what if how I show up 
isn't good enough? What if I cry during church? What if I fall asleep during the sermon? What if I say the wrong thing or wake up in a bad mood? What if my child cries during worship? What if I forget to match my shoes to my belt? What if I forget to put on two of the same matching shoes? What if, for whatever reason, I can't show up as my best real self? Our best is sometimes a seemingly impossible thing, right? And when we don't feel we are at our best, when we feel like we might just snap in half, hope is really hard to find. Light is really hard to find. Truth is really hard to find. Theologian Kate Bowler a very, very favorite of mine, writes in her book called Good Enough about our Ezekiel scripture reading for today, about a man named Ezekiel who struggled to be his best and to find hope when all felt lost. And Bowler writes, I have a hard time navigating my relationship with hope. I hope for healed bodies and restored families, an end to hate and no need for war. But just as I begin to imagine a better future, a news story or my Twitter feed bursts my optimism, sending me crashing back down to earth, back down to reality, where hope is a dangerous word. Too much hope, and you are frankly delusional. Too little hope, and you will drown in despair. So how do we have hope when our reality looks so hopeless, she writes. There is this obscure book of the Bible that shows up in the lectionary only a handful of times. And you will rarely hear someone preach about it because it's pretty strange. Ezekiel was a prophet, and he was a priest chosen by God to explain his reality. The Babylonians, led by King Nebuchadnezzar, had removed the Judeans from their land and taken them into captivity, and marched them hundreds of miles into exile, a common theme for those people. Talk about losing hope. Ezekiel was only 25, and those Jews probably did not have adequate shoes or food or shelter for their long journey. In Jewish thought at the time, the temple was the location of the divine, and so to be removed from that sacred site meant being removed from God's presence. And what's more, several years into captivity, Bowler tells us, Jerusalem was sacked. The temple destroyed. God was gone. Hope was gone. Ezekiel snapped. He was a traumatized witness to a traumatized people. There was no end in sight, no hope in sight. His strange visions and dreams that the text tells us about grapple with the horizons they experienced. People dying, people taken from their homes, people separated from those they loved, abandoned, so they felt, by God. Ezekiel bore witness to the not yetness the unknowing of when this chaos would end. 
the totalizing feeling of despair, the depth of unhope. But then, Bowler writes, something odd happened. Ezekiel stood over a mass grave. Under his feet were thousands of dry bones, the scripture tells us. It might have been an old battlefield, or perhaps the Judeans were taken into captivity and weren't allowed individual burials. And then God Almighty asked Ezekiel, while standing in the valley of dry bones, a silly question. Can these bones live? I can only imagine how despairing he felt standing on the graves of loved ones. Too many to count war doesn't offer the luxury of funerals. Ezekiel was looking at death close up as bones stood below him. If you have ever witnessed Death, you know how infuriating it is to be asked the question, can these bones live? Of course not. Right? What good is hope spoken over a pile of dry bones, thought Ezekiel. But God asked him to prophesy and to go and tell the people in the midst of their despair that God was going to resurrect, that God was going to restore community even in such a dark time, that God would establish a kingdom, build back up the temple, put bones back together, that all hope with God is never lost. And then the vision continued, as our text tells us, Ezekiel felt rattling under his toes, and the bones cracked together. Lungs filled with the very breath of God, and that valley of dry bones, this metaphor for hopeless despair, filled with life once again. Bowler writes, God is not done yet. When all we can see is despair and decay and destruction and disease and rain and failure and broken ankles, God sees hope. But not empty optimism or empty hope. God sees hard one hope. Hope with feet, with legs. Hope that takes work. Can these bones live? Can hope come alive again? What if I've snapped in two? The restoration of Israel did not come without the participation of her people. This isn't about standing by passively while watching God work. Ezekiel goes on to narrate how Israel will be restored, the land and the people he thought were destroyed will be restored because the people, with God's help, will rebuild the temple, hope with feet. The community will establish a new polity. The people will rebuild hope together even when it feels hopeless, even after being snapped in two. The book of Ezekiel ends with, The name of the city from that day on shall be, The Lord is there. Not was there, but then you ruined it. Not will be there, but once you do these things or get your act together, the Lord is there. Currently. Now. 
God is there when all we see are dry bones. God is there when the world we were promised and the hope we hope for feels nowhere nearby. In these moments when it seems that all hope is lost, Ezekiel invites us to look and listen. God is there, shocking us with the resurrection of hope itself. And maybe having hope is just good enough. And so on that mid-summer, mid-July, mid-week, mid-chaos day, with my broken ankle and my broken heart, feeling as though nothing could possibly else go wrong and nothing might ever go right again, feeling as I had snapped in two. I was sitting in our dining hall with all of these 60 five campers standing on my crutches, and would you believe it, the power went out. <laughs> the electricity gone, and my hope right with it, feeling like I would never rise again, like I had failed those campers, like it was somehow my fault for not being my best or doing my best. And we sat there in the dark for a while, waiting for instruction, waiting for an answer to our hopelessness. When suddenly, I heard a snap, and then another, a crack, a snap, and a crack. And then when all felt so dark, the room began to glow. Someone had brought out a box of glow sticks. Glow sticks, of course. The room of campers lit up and their faces were aglow with green and red and blue lights. And the thing about glow sticks they need to snap before they can glow. They need to break and crack. Glow sticks are just a common camp item. We have them all the time. But in that moment, they gave me the hope to find my best self again in the darkness and try again to let my best be good enough and to find light even where I felt I had cracked in half. Jesus called himself light of the world, but boy, did he know what darkness was. The darkness and the history of the human heart, he knew there were bushels of human greed, Poverty, anger, despair, hopelessness, and Jesus knew the darkness had drawn some to violence and others to feel inadequate. He knew what it was like to feel humanly helpless, humanly hopeless. And he told us, guiding us through the darkness like a glow stick, to seek the kingdom of God, to seek what we know is right and is good, and to do our best even when we snap, when the glow hasn't come yet. And to know that however we show up, however our best looks like today, is good enough. So snap if you need to. Break a little if you need to. God will be there for you when you're ready to glow. However your best looks, it's welcome. 
in this space. Let yourself shine in the chaos. Let yourself fall apart if you need to. Know that your best will look different each and every day. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and the rest will snap into light. Amen.